Okay, when you're done with the item, it should look something like this. It'll have this eerie type of shadowing effect inside of all grooves, cracks, and crevices. So when you're making your non-organic items, it's good to put edge loops in here. That way you can capture that good detail. So how do I use this to my advantage? Well, in Photoshop, let's now open that new map. It is located under File Open and on the desktop, Bake Out, Render Data, Mental Ray, Light Map. Ooh, wait, wrong video. Sorry. Knife Bake. That's what it was. Knife Bake, Render Data, Mental Ray, Light Map. There it is. Cool. Now I have this. All right, so what I'm going to do here is go quickly get three different textures. Okay, I'm going to go on the internet, just plunging around and get a steel texture. Oops, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> well, kind of, you know, I'm going on the internet to actually steal a texture, I guess. Okay, so here. Got this texture. I'm going to copy it real quick. And paste it in here. Change it to multiply. And move it into position where it fits onto the blade. I'm not worried about scaling it wrong, doing anything like that wrong. Just getting it into position. Okay. When done, hit apply and then erase out any parts that you might have missed that go on to the other parts of the object. In other words, over here, it's going onto this shell. Next, let's look for maybe a leather. And let's see here. This leather texture looks kind of interesting. No, it does not. But this does. Let's copy the image and then go back to Photoshop. And then paste it in here. Same thing as before, we turn it to multiply. We move it into position of the handle. And then we kick quickly scrunch it up and move it into position. And apply it. Last one, let's go to iron. And here we go, iron texture. Copy this image, go back to Photoshop and paste it If I had the show transformation controls on, I can quickly go in here and rotate this out. Turn it on to multiply. And see how much I can get in here without having it weigh upon any of the other pieces. Apply it and erase. Okay, now the one thing that you should know is higher the contrast value, the better the item looks within the render, within the game engine, within whatever you are using this for. Higher the contrast value. So if I go into Navigator and make sure I got my Navigator open, I'll show you what that means. Here I have these, which are shaded kind of nice, but they could be a lot nicer. Let's say I take this one, right click on it, duplicate layer, hit OK, bring it up to the top and change it to multiply. Okay, how about this? I turn it off, I turn it on. Ooh, pretty sweet, no doubt, right? Uh, also, if you want to adjust it even further, you can go into image adjustments levels. Here, I can mess around with the level capabilities of black and I can get even higher contrast values. Okay, let's kind of look at this now. 
very detailed. The thing they're going to look at is the serrations. If you don't like other values within the map, you can quickly take this. Let's take a box right here and check this out. If I have this highlighted, I can click this box right here and then take this. This is a layer mask. I can invert it if I wanted to by going image, adjustments, invert. Now, this one doesn't have the same as that one. And you can assign different contrast ratios to each part. That's a quick and easy way to do that. So if I change this to multiply, look how much contrast that has. This one doesn't need that much contrast because it already has those edge loops in the area. Plus the two just made it even better. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is now save this. If I just hit save, what's going to happen back in Maya, it's going to automatically just about update for me. So if I can go in here, go into Maya, click on my Lambert 3, it assigns it to the incandescent channel. It works out quite well. Um, if you want, you can assign it to the actual material color channel too. There we go. All baked out, ready for just about anything. Again, if you want to tone some of this down right here, that's very easily done by assigning a layer mask to this item or this area right here of the knife. But it plays off really well. Those serrations look very sharp. Okay, so that is how to bake an item. That thing is ready for just about anything. You could bring it into ZBrush and put it on your character if need be. So this works great for, like, especially if you're building out your character with, like, little grenades, uh, backpack, pouches, and stuff. I would definitely bake each and every one and then bring it back in and apply that texture to that item. All right, enjoy and have a good one. Again, my name is Jason Welsh, and until next video.